from the studios of TV Grace International. Here are the ineffable words of God. The Gospel of Grace on the lips of the man Christ Jesus. Abba Father, Well then let's get on with let's get on with the conference. The name is the body of sin. Let's go to Romans chapter six, verse six, because there's a very beautiful revelation. Romans chapter six, verse six. It says Knowing this, oh Father, if you don't know, the person is not in anything. Look, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. Now, why does Paul say that the body of sin might be done away with? Because it's not destroyed, blessed, you see it here. But we, we have died with him because he who has died to sin. Look how the next verse says. It says, verse 7, excuse me. It says, for he who has died has been justified from sin. In other words, it talks about sin, but it says, for he who has died has been freed from sin. In other words, the system thinks that there are sins by verses like this because they do not have revelation, they are not enlightened. And the person who is not enlightened can read the same verse that you read, but you are enlightened. And then these people do not understand that they walk with a horse on top, with a shark as I call it, the body of sin. That, ah, and they don't see the cemetery, the cemetery growing in grace. They don't see it because we... If we are dead, I mean where there are dead, there is a cemetery. When someone dies, where do they take them? To a cemetery. Well, here we are talking about the old man's graveyard of those growing in grace. Now, pay attention to me, blessed one, that if you learn how to deal well with this matter, with your body and learn to talk to it, I don't get this. Respect me. Because you are a dead man, you are a corpse that is not supposed to come here to bother me with pains and situations. And you have to learn how to deal with it. Because look, I have not learned it at all. I told you that the other days that voice manifested itself to me. I heard that voice telling me, that's appendicitis. And I said, look, you're talking now. Because, look, I'm going to be 65 years old now. Oh, Father, naturally, I don't look or feel that age I think I was 42 years old when I started the ministry because all of us in Christ Jesus, when the understanding is enlightened, we see beyond and we see everybody pretty. But we have to know how to deal with this cemetery, looking well that it is always on its tombstone, that your body, the old man, which is full of deceitful desires are not true. As it says in Ephesians 4.22, to put off of the old man who is flawed. Don't let it happen to you like to some brothers back in Miami who, when they heard me preach, they wanted to pass over me. They said, no, we are already perfect. And then they were called the perfected ones. And then since they were perfect, they did not so. They gathered in a place where nobody wanted to pay and nobody wanted to sow. And there the kiosk fell to the ground. Unbelievable. Anyone who deviates from here and takes his eyes off the man Christ Jesus begins to have dreams and begins to see things. Everyone who separates from here begins to see mirages, sees doors and says, look over there. That's better than what Jose Luis has said. And they go around and swear they're doing better than me. And then... There are roads that seem to man to be of life, but their end is the way of death. So that old man, what it does is that religion does not understand. I wrote here sin was taken away, 
but the body where sin dwelt is present until this moment. Therefore, Paul said, to die is gain, for you are stripped of the body of humiliation. That is to die when I spoke of turning a blessed person over to Satan last week. If I hand you over to Satan, I mean, if you are disobedient and you are walking around giving bad testimony and I hand you over to Satan, you should send me a gift and say, thank you, apostle, because you are taking that shark off me. You are taking that body of humiliation off me. However, I can go to the cloud of witnesses and serve you from there. And I don't miss any conference there. So whoever is offended for being delivered to Satan, he does not know what he is saying. There are people who can't deal with their bodies. And look, if you don't know how to deal and you're going to give bad testimony, the best thing to do is to go to the cloud of witnesses. Well then, look, when we speak of sin so that the body of sin may be destroyed, you must understand that Paul is not contradicting himself. For example, if Paul says to you, in Hebrews 9, 926, it says he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, speaking 2,000 years ago, when he made the sacrifice on the cross, but now once at the end of the ages, remember that the centuries were consummated there. There was a stop. Because in uniting heaven and earth, by justifying, hmm, eh, what's that called? In reconciling heaven and earth, Colossians 1, 17, or is it 20, 17 to 20 around there? By reconciling the heavens and the earth, this world ceased to be. So we are a new creation. We are dead to sin. Before you were born, you were already dead to sin. In fact, I was telling a lady, look, do you know that you have never been a sinner, that you were born perfect? And she opened her eyes and she said to me, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. And I said to her, well, you are praying wrong because when Christ died in the consummation of the ages, you were sold masses and sold religion for so long that you are still thinking about sacrifices, dead chickens, masses, novenaries, letting yourself be deceived by all those lying priests and all these falsehoods of Rome, that is the great harlot. The Pope is the greatest harlot that exists on earth. That is why it is going to be destroyed with fire. With the voice, look, with the final trumpet will be destroyed. How are you going to be with that nonsense? And questions of religion such as, I'm going to get lost, the devil is on the loose, things are so bad, and with those confessions like that, don't you know that the centuries were consummated? And it says here that once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself to put sin out of the way. Sin was taken out of the way. What was not taken away was where sin dwelt which is the body of sin that we have on. And apparently, if you are not enlightened, then you think you are in sin, but you are in perfection. In that process, you are. Your spirit with a single offering. We were perfect forever. Look, I'm going to read it to you there in Hebrews 10, 14. Look how it says, it says, verse 14, for by one no more offerings are needed. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit testifies it. Verse 15 says, But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. Because he could not for that time. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, in their minds, and in their minds I will write them. He adds, and I will remember their sins and transgressions no more. I will never again remember that you were a sinner. 
Of course, because in this covenant, when Christ consummated everything, all the elect who are inscribed in the book of life, all the predestined when they are born, are born already saved and perfected, but they do not know it. That is our message of growing in grace, bringing to the nations to present every perfect man, even if you see him crawling around, even if you see him wearing what he is wearing. He is perfect, but because he doesn't know it, that's why you see him that way. But once he knows that dead man rises, once you understand what Christ did, and if anyone gives credit to the blood of Jesus Christ, it is this servant and the entire ministry growing in grace. Don't tell me that evangelicals honor the blood of Christ and Catholics less so. No one honors the blood of Christ like this ministry. You are apostates, blasphemers of the blood of Jesus. Enemies of the cross of Christ is what you are. Speaking to the Protestant religious system, the blood he shed consummated the ages, perfected our lives, took away sin, destroyed the devil, brought you healing, brought you prosperity. But if you don't know that, then you're just wandering around like a bum. You go around complaining about how things are bad that last year that this happened. No, 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 blessed. Look, you missed the train. You missed the train. So sit over there while the train goes by. I mean, even though this is the train, you're watching the train ride this train. So you can catch up on your powerful position. And you have to understand that you are dead to the flesh. Paul says, how shall we live even in the state of life we had before? We are dead to sin, dead to the law, free from the devil, free from condemnation. Blessed it is much that was given to us. Hey, Colossians 2.11. See if this tells you the same thing. It says, In him you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. by casting the carnal sinful body out of you in the circumcision of Christ. Notice what the Apostle Paul tells you there. You were circumcised with circumcision not done by hand. This is spiritually speaking. It says that although you have a body of sin, that which recorded sin in it was cast out. Okay, do not take them into account. For I will remember their sins and transgressions no more. Apostle, then can we misbehave? If you wish, everything is lawful for you. If you want, go on that way. On that credit card, which is a card for you, that you are a perfected. Hey, but the one who understands this doesn't think like that. It is all right for outsiders to say, no, those people live in debauchery, but not those from inside, because those of us from here are knowledgeable. And even though we have such an enormous position, we are not going to live as we please. No, because you know that what you sow, you reap. That is the great revelation of this ministry. What you sow, you reap, blessed. If you cheat a brother, you will reap. If you misbehave, for all that you do comes. Retribution. Because judgment begins in the house of God, in the family of faith. We are the ones who have to be setting an example of this beautiful pearl of great price that we have found. This is a privilege, an honor, a privilege. Privilege and honor. You are in the affairs of the living God, the God who was born again, the God who consummated everything on the cross. And the bandits of the 12 apostles damaged with their false gospel of circumcision, the Judaizing gospel that came to destroy the world. So blessed we are in precious times, times of reform. Let's read Romans 6 too. For you to see how you are doing. How all the blessed are. It says. 
Verse 1, excuse me, 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Being dead to sin, see how Paul speaks. Certainly not. There is no way to do that if you are enlightened. If you are not enlightened, you are still in the same thing, saying blessed, but you have not really understood this message. And you are letting yourself be abused by the designs of the flesh and the lies that you have in your body, letting them reign over you. When what you should be doing is reigning over that body. It says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were baptized in his death, not in water. But the evangelicals and the Catholics believe that by pouring water, that will help it, but that does not work with water. You have to give science revelation on that body of death so that you can govern it. If not, it will eat you alive. You are talking about the body of sin, what Satan damaged. That body is a pretend body. There are four walls of lies that you have around you. The only wall you have is the ceiling. Looking at the gospel of the uncircumcision, that there you see it very clearly, but those around you are darkness. You have to set your eyes on the things above. And not in the clouds, but in the things above. Look, here in the things that the gospel of uncircumcision put in your head, because there is your life hidden. So blessed, I think that's enough revelation. It was a message in tongues. Those who have the gift of interpretation understood me perfectly. Those outside, those do not understand anything. They do not understand anything. Their ears are full of religious matches, Pentecostal matches, evangelical matches, Baptist matches, Catholic matches, full of matches. If they were ignited like a rocket, they would fly. But you who have the gift of interpretation, you have understood me perfectly because you are knowledgeable. I declare you blessed. I declare you reigning in life. I say that the life of Jesus is manifested in your body. That body keeps you healthy there, prosperous, that there is no complaints, no room for complaints, where there is room for praise. I say you have understood, blessed. You are very knowledgeable. You are one of those growing in grace. That always lead us in triumph. Blessed with every blessing. I say goodbye until the next conference. I love you very much.